we've designed what we believe is the ultimate crosscut sled. With the ease and accuracy of zero play miter bars and the versatility of the match fit system, this sled does it all. For this project, you'll need the following. You got all that? Cool. Let's rock and roll. Make sure to cut all the parts from the same sheet of plywood to ensure uniform thickness. Cut a sheet of half inch thick, void free plywood down to 20 inches by 30 inches. This will be the base layer of your sled. Next, cut two pieces of half inch thick plywood down to 12 and an eighth by 20 and a quarter. These will be the left and right wings of the top layer of the sled. Next, cut six, six inch wide, 24 inch long strips of half inch thick plywood. These will be the interchangeable zero clearance inserts, each one's for one blade set to one angle. The inserts I'm creating for these instructions are as follows. Additional inserts can be created in the future for different blades or other cutting angles. Prepare a solid piece of hard maple or some other dense hardwood to finish it one and a half inch thick by two inches wide, 30 inches long. This will be the fixed rear fence of the sled. Then cut an additional solid piece of hard maple to finish it one and a half inch thick by two inches wide, six inches long. This will be the center support for the fence, keeping the two sides of the sled together after the first cut. Step two, cut the dovetail tracks for your zero clearance inserts. We'll need some dovetail tracks in the base layer of the sled so that we can secure the zero clearance inserts with dovetail hardware. Using a quarter inch diameter straight or spiral router bit, cut 11 30 seconds of an inch deep relief grooves along the 20 inch length of the base layer of the sled, 13 inches in from each side. The grooves should be four inches apart on center. Next, use a half inch, 14 degree dovetail router bit set at 3 8 cutting depth and route dovetail tracks in the same locations as the relief grooves. Step three, drill the mounting holes in your zero clearance inserts. Mark lines one inch in from each long edge, five inches in from one short edge, and eight inches in from the other short edge. Where the perpendicular lines intersect will be the mounting hole locations. Using a 3 8 diameter Forstner bit, counterbore all four holes one quarter of an inch deep. Next, drill quarter inch diameter through holes in the center of each counterboard hole. And repeat these steps for all zero clearance inserts. Step four, assemble the sled parts. Thread the dovetail track nuts in the dovetail hardware variety pack onto the screws to the bottom of the zero clearance inserts. Insert the dovetail track nuts in the dovetail tracks of the sled base and line the edge of the zero clearance insert up with the edge of the sled base. Use a square to make sure that the zero clearance insert is square and centered on the sled base with exactly 12 inches on each side. Once square and centered, tighten the dovetail hardware. Next, on a flat assembly surface, apply glue to the sled base on both sides of the zero clearance insert. Use a brush or a roller to make sure you get full coverage. Place the two top wings on top of the base layer, flush with the edge of the zero clearance insert. You'll notice that the wings are slightly oversized. Make sure that the wings overhang the base evenly on all three exposed sides. Clamp down the two wings using calls to distribute the pressure evenly. Once parts B and C are clamped in place, loosen the screws and remove the zero clearance insert to prevent the squeeze out from permanently gluing it in place. And proceed to step five while the glue is drying. Step five, cut dovetail tracks on the rear fence. Using a quarter inch diameter straight or spiral router bit, cut 11 30 seconds of an inch deep relief grooves along two adjacent sides of the 30 inch length of the rear fence. The grooves should be centered on both sides. Next, use a half inch 14 degree dovetail router bit set to 3 8 cutting depth and route dovetail tracks in the same locations as the relief grooves. Step six, trim sled to final dimensions. Instead of trying to get three separate parts to assemble together the exact right size, all square and everything, it was easier for me to just make the base layer the finished dimension that I want and trim everything else around it so that everything's flush and square in the exact right size. After the glue's dried, use a router and a flush trim bit to trim the sled top flush with the sled base. Step seven, route your dovetail tracks in the sled top. Cut quarter inch wide, 11 30 seconds of an inch deep relief grooves four inches and eight inches in from each end. Next, use a half inch 14 degree dovetail router bit set to three eighths of an inch cutting depth and route dovetail tracks in the same locations as the relief grooves. If your router table fence capacity is less than eight inches, 
you can create an auxiliary fence and take advantage of the full size of your router table top. Go to this link right here to watch the video and download the free plans. Step 8. Install the fixed rear fence. Apply glue to the 1.5 inch face of the fence and place it on top of the sled along its 30 inch side, with the dovetail tracks facing inward toward the sled and upward. Make sure that the edge of the fence is flush with the edge of the sled and clamp the fence in place. Glue the fence center support to the top of the fence. Just to keep everything level, I put clamps on both sides of the center support at the joint where it meets the long part of the fence. Allow an appropriate amount of time for the glue to dry before removing the clamps and proceeding on to the next step. Step 9. Determine miter bar location. Mark a line down the center of the sled's 20 inch length, so 15 inches in from each side. Measure the distance from the edge of the sawtooth to the inside edge of both miter slots. Transfer the measurement from the saw blade to the miter slots to the sled, starting from the center line. Add 3 eighths of an inch to both measurements, then mark lines parallel to the center line on the sled. These lines represent the center of your saw's miter slot and the center of the zero play miter bars. On the miter slot center lines, mark 5 inches, 9 inches, and 13 inches in from the front edge of the sled. Where the lines intersect will be the miter bar mounting hole locations. Step 10. Adjust the miter bar to your slot width. Stack the zero play top bar onto the zero play bottom bar with arrows facing the same direction. Insert the three button head screws through the counterboard slots of the zero play top bar. Make sure the two bars still slide freely. Insert two nickels in the bottom of the miter slot then place the zero play miter bar assembly on top of the nickels. With one finger, gently slide the top bar in the direction of the arrows. Once the bottom bar contacts the left wall of the miter slot and the top bar is touching the right wall of the miter slot, tighten the button screws. The miter bar should just barely touch the sides of the miter slot. Pushing too hard will make the miter bar too snug and difficult to move. Once the button screws are tightened, slide the miter bar back and forth a few times through the slot to ensure that it moves smoothly and doesn't have any side to side play. Step 11, install zero play miter bars. Using a half inch diameter forstner bit, counterbore the mounting holes three quarters of an inch deep, leaving a quarter inch of material at the bottom of the counterboard holes. Next, drill quarter inch diameter through holes in the center of each counterboard hole. With the button screws facing outward, attach the miter bar to the bottom of the sled with the 832 pan head screws. Don't tighten the screws all the way just yet. Put the sled down on the tabletop with the miter bars in the miter slots and use a carpenter's triangle to square the sled up to the blade. Once the fence is square with the blade, secure the miter bars in place by tightening the 832 pan head screws. With the blade lowered, run the sled back and forth a few times to ensure that it moves smoothly and has no side to side play. Step 12. Identify and mark zero clearance inserts. Install a zero clearance insert and the desired saw blade. Turn on the saw with the blade outside of the sled. Wait a few seconds before advancing the sled through the cut. There's more run out when the blade initially starts rotating and then it kind of levels off after a few seconds. After the blades cut all the way through the portion of the zero clearance insert in front of the fence, pull the sled back toward the front of the saw until the blade is again completely outside of the sled before turning off the saw. Make note of the blade used on the zero clearance insert, remove, and hang to store. I marked mine right here and I just drilled these little holes that I could easily hang them up and store them in the shop until I need them again. Go through each zero clearance insert and blade combination individually using the same method. Now I made a bunch of different accessories for this sled and I'm not going to go through all of them right now, but I did take the liberty of compiling all of them into one PDF that you can download for free by going right here. And that's about all I got for you today. Now with this sled being modular, there are so many possibilities of all these different accessories and stuff that you can make for the sled. So if you've got an idea, and you make an accessory for this sled, we'd love to see it. Share it with us on social media. And as always, we want to see what you're up to. Thanks for watching.